the work of the Westminster Assembly was both a smashing success and a colossal failure. What do I mean by that? It was a success in that here we are in California, no one knew about, in 2022, with people packed into a room to hear about the Westminster Assembly. They never could have fathomed some 400 years later that people would still be caring about their work and that there would be Presbyterian churches all around the world who have the Westminster Standards as their confessions, and indeed that there would be free churches and Baptists who still, without having those confessions, show great respect to them, or maybe have the second London Baptist Confession, we'll say more about later, which is a derivative work from the Westminster Assembly. So it is a smashing success. It's just amazing to think these documents, we have a a family that joined our church a few years ago, and uh, the, the wife and mother is from Cameroon. And you might just think, oh, Africa, but Sub-Saharan Africa is very Christian. In Cameroon, she just said, oh, I grew up Presbyterian, and my dad was Presbyterian, and they have more Presbyterians worshiping probably each Sunday in Cameroon than in the United States. Who could have fathomed that? So an unimaginable success and a colossal failure. A failure in that the reforming efforts in England did not stick In fact, it's one of the most surprising things for Americans, especially American Presbyterians, to discover that Presbyterianism is practically non-existent in England today. It is not an exaggeration at all to say all of the... Now, I'm not talking about Scotland, but England. All the Presbyterians worshiping on a Sunday in England are not as many Presbyterians as worship in Christ's covenant on a Sunday. Our church is about 1,500 people. There are not that many. There are two small Presbyterian denominations that are in England and some up into Scotland and and Wales and some on the continent, but they would have maybe a couple dozen churches between them. Presbyterianism simply is almost non-existent today in England. There are many good, fine men doing work in many good churches, and it's just the size of a man's fist. But if you want to judge by its original aim to unite the kingdoms of Ireland, Scotland, and England, as we'll see, that did not last very long, and the documents themselves did not prove as influential in their own birthplace. 